Good evening everyone and welcome to Earls Hall Baptist Church's evening devotion. My name is Tom and it is great to have you with us tonight. If you're on Facebook Live just now, please do say hi or give a thumbs up in the chat. It would be great to hear from you and I'll give you a mention at the end as well. We have a few notices tonight. The first is Safe Space Cafe. This is continuing Wednesdays and Thursdays, 9 till 3. So we're on tomorrow from 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Next week, because it is the October half term, we're only open on the Wednesday from 9 till 3. We're not open on the Thursday next week. So please do bear that in mind. But please do come along if you're available tomorrow or next Wednesday. Coming up, we've got the Celebration of Light Sunday, the 31st of October from 4 o'clock till 6 o'clock. This is for primary age children. Please do uh, come along to that. Uh, there's information on the flyer there. That's also on our Facebook page, so please do check that out. We've also got Night Light. This is also on the 31st of October from 7 till 8.30. This is for secondary age and up children and young people and you are very welcome to come along to that and the details again are on our Facebook page or on our church website. We'd love to see you there. Now on uh, the 7th of November it's our harvest service at Earls Hall Baptist. Uh, please do bring along canned food, cans of uh, potatoes, uh, tinned meats, uh, so things like meatballs or uh, steak pies or chicken curry as a tinned meat and tinned vegetables so that we can make dinner so that the food that we provide will make dinner for people who need it. At the Our distribution centre for the food bank we used I think more boxes last Friday than we have ever used so please do uh, remember to bring your cans of food on November the 7th for our harvest service. Now that Sunday on the 7th of November, I will be speaking at Avenue Baptist because at the moment they are vacant. They don't have a, a, a senior minister there at the moment. And I ha was invited to speak a while ago. So I'm really looking forward to speaking at Avenue Baptist and would really value your prayers whilst I am there and uh, thinking about prayer. Shall we pray? Lord, it's good to be able to gather together. Thank you for all that's going on in the life of the church. Thank you for that which is going on in our community. Lord, we know the, there is great pain and heartache and hurt at the moment in, uh, in South End. And we pray for your healing and loving and comforting arms to surround us. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus, the name which is above every other name. Amen. Now, next Wednesday, there isn't going to be a devotion, uh, but the prayer Zoom is still going to be available. And the, the those are on Wednesdays at 8 and also on Sunday at 9.30. So both of those prayer Zooms will still be taking place, but there'll be no devotion next Wednesday evening. Tonight I want us to think about being satisfied. We all have a taste in our mouths, I think, a bit of dissatisfaction. Things over the past year and a half with Covid, with the political climate, with the cost of living, with health, we are dissatisfied, I think. There are things going on that aren't what we want to be going on. Things aren't what we would choose to be happening around us. We are dissatisfied. In the musical Hamilton, a song uh, tells us that Angelica Schuyler will never be satisfied. She will never be satisfied. And it's satisfaction that we're thinking about. And I want to think about Monet here and his first major piece of Impressionist art, something as well that Jesus said and did that deals with satisfaction. Now, we have looked at the work of Claude Monet several times in the past year and a half. Let me put the image that we're thinking about up tonight. It's called Impression Sunrise, and he painted it in 1874. We've looked at Monet a few times in the past year and a half, and that's partly because, well, I, I like Monet. 
And it's partly because his work's very satisfying to look at and partly because of the stories we know that surround many of his paintings. Monet became known as the founder of Impressionism, which was an initially derogatory term for the art that he and then others produced. Quick, indistinct paintings that were unrefined compared to what was normal and proper. Now, we know that Monet studied in several places, but he studied in Paris. He became a student of the Barbizon School. This, not unusually for the day, had a focus on painting landscapes or outdoor scenes through making a preliminary sketch on the canvas and then bringing that sketched canvas inside to paint the beauty of the outdoors in the studio. Now, Monet wasn't satisfied with this approach. Instead, and we have considered this fact before, he began to paint outside, his canvas being blown about a little by the wind. Some of his art contains bits of grass and insects that blew into the painting as a result of him being outside. He wanted to paint the moment of changes that were in his view. The move of light on water demanded that he was there and that the way he painted had to be faster than what was considered normal and so we get Impressionism. Not a made-up view, but an impression of the view that is there as it happens, a moment in time. A whole style of painting was formed because Monet and others were dissatisfied with how they had been taught to paint. So here is his earliest famous Impressionist painting and it's called Impression Sunrise. It's a moment in time, a scene of the port of Le Havre. Uh, Moni captured this moment by being there and by painting it. It's an initial foray into the more dramatic and distinct brush strokes and, and colour choices that are perhaps more famous in his later works. But here is a satisfying impression of a harbour in the mist in France in the 1870s. And it exists because Monet wasn't satisfied. Are we ever truly satisfied? I'm not sure uh, that we're meant to be permanently satisfied, like a person who never truly hungers to know the appreciation of food or who never truly thirsts to appreciate the delight of a glass of water. We're meant to hunger and thirst for righteousness. But I also believe that we're given moments in time of satisfaction in our lives of faith and moments in time where dissatisfaction pushes us to change things, a bit like money and Impressionism. So here's a story that has a period of time with satisfaction. It's from Matthew 14. Jesus directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Let me just pick up on one verse there. Matthew 14 verse 20. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Here is a miracle of sustenance, of grace, of abundance and of creative power. It's a miracle that produces a momentary satisfaction. All these people who are fed are satisfied, but they're going to become hungry again. And Jesus would just a few minutes later go on to describe himself as the bread of life. And he, he does this. After this feeding miracle, John 6 tells us the entire story. Jesus, following this feeding of the 5,000, following this moment of satisfaction, says in John 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The satisfaction that the hungry knew for a moment in the miracle in their physical cells can be met permanently in Jesus spiritually. So if you are looking for satisfaction in your soul, then it's to Jesus that you must come and live for and receive from. He will give to us spiritual satisfaction. He can nourish our souls. He is our bread of life. He is our true source of satisfaction. 
But we can also see, and looking at Jesus' life very clearly, that we can be dissatisfied with things in the world around us, with injustice, with poverty, with hunger, with abuse. These things and many more push us to seek to bring change, a dissatisfaction caused by the corruption of the world around us through sin. And we're pushed to get involved to make changes. And that's also because of Jesus, who is the bread of life. In Jesus, we are both spiritually satisfied and motivated and also motivated to make changes in the world around us that undo the dissatisfaction that we see if we truly open our eyes. So tonight, you may feel a spiritual hunger within you and it is Jesus who can bring you satisfaction. But tonight you may also feel a real dissatisfaction with what you see of the world around you. And this dissatisfaction should push us forward to make a real and lasting change in the world around us because this is God's kingdom coming into the world. And that is something that we pray, isn't it? That God's kingdom would come, that his will would be done. And we're going to close our time together by saying those words from the Lord's Prayer. So let's say these words together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed Moni and uh, Jesus teaching tonight. Let me just say hi to uh, everyone online. Hi Doris and Katie and Liz, Steve and Hannah and Carol and Clive and Patsy. Hi Sue. Uh, It's great to have you join with us and uh, to everyone who'll be joining at a different time or later on. Thank you and I trust you know God's grace and peace to you. God bless. Good night.